and welcome to Once More with Feeling. I'm your host, Edmund Scribbins, and joining me once again is... This. I'm pretty much a co-host now, so hey. Yeah. Always a, it's always me. Yeah. This is like... It always the, belongs to me. <laughs> this is like, what, the fifth time you've co-hosted with me? Must be about that, yeah. It's, I, I swear this is like the eighth episode. It's yeah. something like that. I'm just generally here. Yeah. yeah. He uses me every night. It's horrifying. Less said on that, the better. <laughs> All right. So um, this time round, it's going to be a bit different from normal, as we're going to be reviewing two albums that have recently come out: Shine Down's Threat to Survival and Calafina's. Uh, oh, what was it called? <laughs> Far on the water. Calafina's Far on the water. Uh, <laughs> Such an impression. Yeah. Um, but first off, we'll get the usual fair underway uh, by se- discussing what we've been listening to, aside from the obvious. Uh, so, yeah. So, <laughs> what have <laughs> what have you been listening to? Oh, a lot of this. I can't say so. Getting into things again. Hmm. I can't listen to this. I can't listen to this. And it's going to be bouncing around a lot. Mm-hmm. It's weird, anyway. Most recent stuff's been synthwave artist Dan Terminus, uh, some of Aina from Japan, mm-hmm. a bit of Mod- Mogwai, and Tattoo. So, yeah, a big weird mix there, really. Yeah, very eclectic mis- mix. Uh, I've mainly been just listening to lots of Psycho Stick recently. That's because you saw them live. Yeah. And met them. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. This um, isn't a meat, it's a sandwich. <laughs> But aren't you feeling it in the meat? <laughs> well, David Cameron certainly is. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Sorry, how did we know? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking an animal. <laughs> I'm on the boo. <laughs> Guar. I've actually been listening to Guar, but they stick in my mind a little bit because they're Guar. Yeah, it's, they're one of those bands that just gets in your brain. <laughs> Probably have a song about that, to be fair. Probably. I should check up on that. <laughs> um, uh, listening to a bit of Killing Joke and Dog Fashion G- Disco again because I saw Dog Fashion Disco live. Oh, I've actually got another Killing Joke album recently. I haven't listened to it yet. Mm. Uh, I've got like 20 albums I got on my yeah. player that have been added recently. I haven't got through them all yet. Yeah, well, it's. Oh, been... I, I listened to an Athena as well. Yeah. Weather Systems album. Mm. Very, very uh, Weathered Systems, it, I, I think. I, I would possibly say Weathered Systems is actually my favourite Anathema album. Interesting. It is a good album, that's for sure. Mm. I know, I, I can't quite tell. I've listened to so many of their albums and I can still never really tell which is my favourite. Yeah. I find it to exit might well be the one. Because in the total track at the moment is amazing. Also, the acoustic version of Leave No Trace on mm-hmm. the acoustic album is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think which one a fine day to exit is. Some of the beach in the room. Ah, yeah. In the car. It's just a really good album. Mm-hmm. Of well, as you take from my nap, but really. Yeah. Like pretty uh, consistent with the like, quality. Yeah, that's what, one thing I've noticed. Some bands, they'll have sort of a slight dip in quality. <laughs> <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> uh, but oh, enough... I just dip in quality so big you're jumping into a chasm. <laughs> so, <okay. laughs> Which is why it's been such a struggle for them to get back up. Let's try to climb back up. It's like, you know, climbing Everest. Yeah. What's having no legs? And only one arm. I mean, pursued by Yetis. Now I'm just... Um, did you ever play that old uh, skiing game? Where it's all... <laughs> Sinistar! What? Yeah. I freaking Sinistar in that. There's a piss in that game as well. Ah. Uh. Because if you keep on going long enough, it just this giant evil star comes after you and kills you instantly. Ah, <laughs> pretty much everything kills you instantly in that game. Well, yeah, but it's very efficient at doing so, more so than anything else. Yeah, but I remember one point hitting so far in that game that I had three yetis chasing me, and sort of like, ah, fuck. <laughs> it's pretty much sort of the reaction of fans to anger. Just Lars Ulrich sliding down a, 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 a side of a mountain on a drum kit, being chased yeah. by rabid fans. 
You say. You, you say. Ruined everything. Fuck your snare drums. <laughs> you say. It, I was going to say. You say a drum kit. Surely it would just be the snare drums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could work. Symbolism. Ah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> You're fired as my co-host! I'm gonna host it in your own girl. <laughs> anyway, no, I need you! <laughs> so co-host to bring up control. What? What co-host means. I can fire you. Ah, didn't expect that one, did you? Not sure how that would work, seeing as I'm the one pressing all the buttons. Shh. <laughs> I was expecting we're way off topic already. Yeah. <laughs> I did say before we started recording. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to topic. Yeah. Um, yeah so, first album, uh, A Threat to Survival. Um, a band I've heard various songs like throughout their careers, but never really actually looked into them very much. Mm. It's the first full album of theirs I've actually heard. I, I've looked into them... I didn't really look into them until sort of early last year because a friend recommended them to me and I was sort of like, eh, let's see what they're like. Really got into them and when I found out that this album was coming out, it was basically a case of, right, it comes out on this day, let's be ready for that. <laughs> yeah, I think the best way to go over it is to go through it sort of track by track as we did with, um, oh God, Everything else? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Although we, it's been more recent that we've actually gone through things properly, track by track. Well, I can't really remember that much. Last thing I remember doing was Sol Invictus. Yeah. And that was track by track, so. Mm. Sol Invictus. I've had a head cold for the past week, so <laughs> memory is a bit scattered. Fluffy. Huh? Fluffy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been having difficulty remembering Threat to Survival's title. <laughs> Wait, why are we here again? Who am I? Where am I? <laughs> Who are you? How did I get here? <laughs> the end. <laughs> anyway, yes. Uh, Threat to Survival. Well, Shine Down. Yeah. I'm not quite sure why, but the cover that I got given is black and white rather than the red one. I don't know why. Hmm, that's strange. <laughs> Honestly, just getting a copy of a game back from someone and just being black and white when it wasn't before. It's like, what? Yeah. Yeah, um, the opening track, Asking For It. It's certainly a provocative, a provocative title. Yeah. Now, I'll be honest, the way the riff opens it, I admittedly got a little concerned because you know what it reminded me of? It's a little bit of Foo Fighters, personally. Oh, I didn't think of that. Actually, it made me think a little of Green Day. Yeah, I guess I can see that as well. Yeah. Um, Monkey Wrench, I think it is. So, it reminds me a little bit of um, the first track on In Silico by Pendulum. Mm -hmm. The first track just comes out of nowhere and sounds absolutely nothing like anything they've done before. It's like, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. And after that, it kind of started to the usual kind of what I was expecting, so... Yeah. I mean, after the opening riff, it gets more... Um, I was sort of like, okay, not sure about this. Oh, now it's. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I mean, basically, is it seems it seems like one of those. It could be a breakup song. It could apply to many other situations as well. Mm. I, mean, I mean, as an opening track, I don't think it really does that much for me. Mm. I mean, a lot of the other songs later on are more memorable. They sound better and more interesting. Yeah. But. So they're all weak openers, which a lot of albums tend to have. Mm. Or if I heard it, I thought, mm, I'm not quite sure why I'm going to like this. Yeah. Like when the other tracks came along later, I thought, actually, this is pretty good. Yeah. I think it w is kind of runs into in contradiction to what we were saying about uh, Soul Invictus <laughs> with that one's weaker tracks. It would have actually been served better by being a middling track, you know, just acting as a bit of filler. Yeah, it's, it's you know, a bit of filler halfway through, and you don't, by the time you've got to that point, you've already heard some good stuff. Yeah. Starting with a weak track is never a good sign when you're just trusting it on your album. Mm. So it's puts you in the kind of mindset immediately that it could not be that good. Yeah, I mean, as I said, when um, Cut the Cord was released as a single, um, I ha had positive feelings towards how the new album might be, but I was very tentative because it could just be a one good. good Huh? A one good song kind of thing. Yeah. Um, 
uh, asking for it it's it's still a solid song I wouldn't say it's a bad song it's just one of the weaker tracks yeah I definitely agree with that well, it might actually be my least favourite on the album mm. but it's just not a good sign starting out with the weakest track yeah, yeah. Uh, then you have Cut the Chord oh my god this song is catchy as hell yeah <laughs> um, it's like a weird discord opening as well it's yeah like, you grab attention instantly I mean, when it was released, I was, I was having a, okay, this is interesting. Yeah, I kind of just contrary to the chanting at the start. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this is interesting indeed. Yeah, it's all. I'm not sure how to describe the chanting. I mean, it it sounds like children chanting, but it's. It does, yeah. It's a very uh, um, the word, kind of high pitched, I guess. Yeah, but it's. It's very evocative. Hmm. And it's been juxtaposed by the kind of more harsh vocals. Yeah. Those main vocals in this song are a lot harsher than they are in Asking For It, so... Hmm. But, I mean, Cut The Chord, it's, it's very much sort of... I understand why the chanting is there and, and what the point of it is, is sort of the whole yeah. idea of just cutting ties and living your own life kind of song. Hmm. It's it kind of chanting like that. Sometimes it, a lot of songs tend to use it improperly. Mm. In this case, it actually works with the song and fits nicely in there. Yeah. It actually adds something to it rather than just being out of place. Mm. Also, the riffing is pretty good stuff. So solid kind of rock riff there. Yeah. Um, nice, yeah. That's one thing I'd say for the album overall is mm. that it's got very solid riffs. The instrumentation doesn't... Everything feels in the right place. Mm, the composition of the songs is generally very good. Yeah. I give it that. Then someone says, whenever it comes out, I want to immediately just tap my foot and nod my head a little bit. Yeah. I know, but... <laughs> uh, State of My Head. State of My Head is an interesting song. As I mentioned to you the other day, actually, about the kind of, the kind of reggae kind of yeah. thing in the background. As it is a very sort of steel pan reggae kind of feel. Mm. Um, but it works for the song. It does, yeah. Um... Again, it's a, a very evocative feel. It's a, um, <sighs> lots of words. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very hard to describe that one because it's sort of it's a much slower pace than the others so yeah. far at least at this point. Yeah, um, it's got a slower pace than you know, the kind of full on rock songs, but also faster than the kind of ballady ones. So yeah, I, I so mean, it's very minimalist at points as well, which is interesting. Yeah. I mean, the thing about State of My Head is it feels it feels like it's evocative of sort of younger years. Hmm. So I can't think what it reminds me. It reminds me of a different band. And I can't think who. This is bugging me a little bit. Um, uh, it's a few bands it has feels of. A bit of um, Pet Shop Boys, a bit of um, hmm. a bit of The Smiths. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Imagine Dragons. Yeah, I can hear that. Um, it's certainly kind of influences all over the place, though, which is nice. Yeah. It's one of those cases of, it definitely, you can tell that there's a lot of influences, but it puts those influences to good effect. Yeah, it kind of has influences in a lot of different places that kind of makes it into something that sounds different and unique, mm. whilst also being able to relate to other things. Yeah, I mean, as we said, the reggae feel, so <laughs> there's those influences. Um, but it's a pretty good song. I mean, it's growing on me. The more I've heard it, the more I kind of yeah. So it's the same kind of feel to it, which is very positive. Which is kind of weird, taking the lyrics. But hey. Yeah. Well, I, I suppose in a way the lyrics are still positive because it's, it's basically kind of uplifting. Yeah. Yes. It's basically a sort. Of, the only way I'm leaving is dead. <laughs> it's kind of the idea that it's sort of a rebellious idea, as it were. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, next song. Uh, uh, Outcast. <laughs> that opening riff is fantastic. Yeah. Well, it doesn't want me actually. There's a little bit of Royal Blood. It's that opening blood? riff especially. Not familiar with Royal Blood. Um, very recent band, kind of rock. Is it, yeah, they don't have a guitarist actually. Right? They've only got a bassist. Huh. There's two of them, so. Huh. Uh, vocals, bass, and drum machine. It's huh. Got a lot of power behind them actually, because there's only two of them. Mm-hmm. I recommend giving them a listen, so. Mm. The album by the uh, first album is only about 35 minutes long, so it's very short. Um, just. Mm -hmm. uh, when. 
uh, Outcast was released early as well, and at f when I first saw it, I was sort of like, "Hang on, did do they? Does it feature Outcast or something?" <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a really weird mix. So I love the um, kind of riffing in the chorus. They have a very kind of driving feel to it as well. Nice. Mm. It feels like the kind of song of you know someone who would be an Outcast for kind of running away from authority or whatever. I think there's never a theme for this album. Mm. <laughs> but the title, title just Threat to Survival. Hmm. Yeah. It's all about some guy who's been like banished from his place but wants to get his revenge. Maybe. Probably not, but Well, it, I think certain songs do tie in very closely to the title of Threat to Survival is sort of like Like Dangerous and Oblivion. Yeah. But I I like the idea of Outcast because it's sort of like, you know, it's sort of, rock and metal have always had this idea of the people involved, you know, the fans, the bands, everyone involved have been outcasts. So, yeah. it's, so it's quite an effective title to have for a song, it's sort of this idea that... Mm. Also, it's the line, like a hammer to a landmine. That yeah. That's fantastic. It's sort of, uh, there's a good lyric. Well, the, that I... I mean, a hammer to a landmine, that's going to be explosive! <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's kind of just a kind of reckless feel to it, I guess. Yeah. Well. But yeah, it's sort of coming back to outlast every outcast. Mm. Basically, oh yeah, yeah, you outcast me, but I'm still around, I'm stronger than you, kind of thing. Yeah. Kind of just revelling in it. Yeah. Like, oh, well, you think you banished me as punishment? Well, actually, I really like this. Yeah. This is where I want to be. Yeah. It's and we get to tying into the title of the album, you know, it's sort of like so often you will have people treating what are regarded as outcasts like they're threats to society or mm, that's true. So it's again we get to effective titles. Something a lot of bands don't seem to do that well. Mm. Yeah, it's like some bands you sort of like wait, what? What does that <laughs> even mean? What Or is something incredibly generic? Yeah. It's like, I love you, as a song title. It's like, well, this is incredibly generic. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Although we'd say that the next track is called How Did You Love? This is true. Although that's an interesting take on the idea, because it's kind of a what's important to leave behind kind of song. Yeah. It's got a song, I mean, it's kind of got that opening kind of keyboard there. I think it's keyboard, anyway. Mm. So it's kind of melancholic as well. So it kind of fits in the theme already. It's like, okay, this is a song of someone who, you know, was around, and even though they're gone, there's people there that care that it's gone. Mm. So it's kind of because it's kind of, it's kind of ballady, I guess. Mostly kind of fast paced as well. Yeah, it's, it's sort of, it teeters mm. on the ballad style, but doesn't quite hit the ballad style, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I can see what you mean. It's, kind of, it's got elements of a ballad type song as well as that kind of more upbeat rock. Yeah. Song. Uh, the rock ballad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they do have sort of ballady songs, but mm. they're not ballad ballads. <laughs> they're not the sort of, oh god, please kill me now, I want I, I don't want to have to listen to this any longer. It's so wishy washy. Yeah. <laughs> In, I'm just looking at the track listing and thinking about it, how I would have reordered it slightly. <laughs> um, and you've got It All Adds Up. Now. That seems like a pretty good place to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's just the kind of structures of the song, actually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> listening to It All Adds Up, what it makes me think of is a sort of, if you like, if you were to do a film noir, but in modern day. <laughs> yeah, it's going to have a slight kind of musical feel to it, I guess. Yeah. So, let's think of a kind of musical song structure. Yeah. It's all... It... Shine down a nice one. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Shine <laughs> down on ice. He's <laughs> just skating around with instruments. I'll be... Quite bizarre to say the least. <laughs> I was going to build up to as well. It's not the first minute or so, just kind of building slowly up towards the main chorus. Yeah. It's going to get slightly faster as it builds up as well, which is nice. Yeah. It was heavier, but also faster as well. It's, all, it's one of those cases of the build, it really grabs you. Yeah. Because it's that bass line. It was a good bass line. Yeah. And it's all a very thudding bass line. It's all. Even, uh, even after it goes to the kind of main chorus part there, it still then carries on building after that. Yeah. So, so this is well, winding up, I guess. Mm. <laughs> Total is very fitting in this case. Yeah. 
and it just adds more and more onto it as it gets through further throughout the song. Yeah, but the chorus is quite interesting. It's sort of, um, there ain't no magic bullet, there's no cure for the weak. There ain't no. Oh, what is it? Uh, oh, God. There ain't no something. <laughs> there ain't no remember in lyrics. <laughs> There ain't no magic bullet, there's no cup for the weak, there's no sympathetic shoulder here to put you to sleep. You're a long, long way from where you thought you would be. Every murder has a motive, but you ain't killing me. <laughs> it's kind of very defiant there as well. Yeah, but it's also, it seems to be a sort of call out to, you know, I presume you're familiar with the term magic bullet. Yeah. It seems sort of calling out to all these, you know, think of the children types. What do I think it's thinking of me, actually? It's kind of, it's also kind of maybe even some kind of anti-bullying or something. True. Like, a lot of people are going putting more and more insults, more and more abuse on someone, but which is to say, no, you can carry on putting it up, but I just don't give a crap. Mm. Uh, you, you can keep doing it if you wish, but you're not going to affect me. You're not going to push me down. I think it's allowed to you eventually. Mm. Probably completely getting the wrong intuition of the lyrics there, but that's what I think to me. The the thing is, with Shine Down, a lot of their lyrics are completely up to interpretation, so it's perfectly viable that we're both right. Or both wrong. Yeah. Okay. I think it's the kind of thing if they want their stuff to be interpretable in any way, then it's up to the fans to interpret it the way they want. Yeah. The way intentional in fact to do that to kind of keep people thinking, hey, here's our lyrics, do what you want with them. Mm. I mean, I find it's much easier to get into bands like that because you don't feel like they're sh trying to shove a message down your throat. Mm, that's true. Well, uh, hey, hey, the song is about this. Wait, what do you think it's about that? You're wrong. Hmm. <laughs> um, next we've got Oblivion. Oblivion is a long change of pace. Yeah. Well, coming after the last song, especially if it's about the kind of things we've been talking about, it's actually kind of unsettling. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those... It, oh, you just find yourself thinking, okay, that's quite a shift. Very much so. It's a lot less happy, a lot less upbeat. I mean, obviously, when he comes in, you get the full guitar riffs coming in. Yeah. It's just like kind of something, oh, so he's kind of molly over something and basically going, whoa, mm. I need to get out of this. I need to stop. I'm going to just flip out and go crazy. Yeah. I mean, the opening lines, time doesn't erase the demons you don't see, dragging up all the wings, temptations overgrown. Truth is, karma don't lie, so let me show you why. It's it's one of those, okay, that's, that's a bit disturbing. <laughs> On the other hand, it you know, still has a kind of like message there of you won't push me down. Mm. It's like, you won't wear me down to the bone, or I'll turn you into stone back into oblivion. Yeah. <laughs> I, it seems all of these songs, I think the whole idea behind the title, Threat to Survival, is the idea that a lot of these songs are fighting back. Mm. Or maybe the, uh, no, the Threat to Survival is kind of like, you know, the mainstream appearance and identification of these people. Mm. And then he's just like, okay, you may think we're a threat to survival, but actually, we're stronger than you. Yeah. <laughs> we aren't a threat, we just want to, you know, coexist. But mm. you keep pushing us back, you keep pushing us down, because we're not like you. Yeah. And all of these songs are sort of fighting back against the grain. Yeah. So then your opinion that we think we're a threat is not correct, and we're going to prove it's not. We can mm. prove we're just as good as you. So the overall kind of atmosphere of Oblivion is quite a bit different to the others. Yeah. I like it. It kind of gives a change of pace mm. to start as being something that is different to us, everything else. Yeah. It's one of those cases where the change of pace is needed. Yeah. Just to sort of mix things up a bit. Mm. I mean, yeah, you can see the opening song, it kind of just builds up kind of heavy rock, heavy rock, heavy rock, heavy rock, and then eventually does this comes on and just completely shifts its style mm. to more kind of, I guess, more melodic kind of song there. There's yeah. less of heavy, chunky riffs and more kind of wall of noise kind of style sucking on there. Yeah, although they actually make the wall of noise work, mm. which is a rarity to say well, the least. Yeah, I like a lot of the songs before, you, know, you can't hear the individual notes anywhere as clearly as you can with those. Mm. So. Yeah. Uh, dangerous. It's getting kind of slower pace. Mm. It kind of... 
I don't know about you, but for me it kind of had a bit of a superhero-like feel to it. A little bit, yeah. Not, not entirely, but I could imagine it being used for, like, a superhero movie. I can imagine him use that second like opening sequence or something. Yeah. Opening credits. Maybe in 10 credits, I guess. But there's a lot of things used for opening credits these days. Yeah. There's so many superhero films. Serious, man. Yeah. Too many to keep up with. Yeah. So, oh, here we go. Well, how many have been out in the last month? 15. Right. Uh, but, yeah. Dangerous is... It feels mm. like it's sort of... They went, okay, we changed the pace. Now let's maintain that pace. Hmm. This is a... No, uh, no obvious. Um... I don't know the word I'm thinking of now. <laughs> mm. uh, tempo? Oh, hmm? oh, no, I've lost my train of thought completely. It's mm. kind of, my train of thought is just derailed, crashed into a station and murdered like five people. <laughs> it reminds me of another band, but I can't think of who. I'm not sure who. <laughs> uh, I think the main chorus part is what reminds me of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could yeah. be anyone there. I, I just so much music, but... Yeah, same. Pointing certain things down can quite often be hard. Mm. But I saw, I will never be voiceless. My weapon of choice is I'd rather be dangerous. I won't be left defenceless. As God is my witness, I'd rather be dangerous. But again, just following with the same kind of themes as the rest of the album. Yeah, yeah. it's all. You won't silence me. I know things. <laughs> you, it, can't, you can't stop us from saying these things and bring you. It kind, it kind of gives increased credence to the idea that it's battling against the grain. You know, it's, yeah. it's sort of the idea of them, sort of the mainstream thinks of them as being a threat to survival and society and all that sort of thing. And they're basically going, okay, you view us like that, we're not going to change. We'll continue in your eyes to be dangerous. Oh, we're going to let you know that we have power. Mm. <laughs> I'd rather, you know, have the voice to be able to do stuff if we needed to, we don't want to, but yeah. we'll let you know that we can. Mm. Yeah, I mean, key verse here, because I still find it's not my imagination, and I, I won't be, I won't be the silent damnation. Yeah. So it's basically the whole idea of they're not going to be silenced and just cast out. It's almost mm. like this album is a concept album without being a concept album. So it's not. It's got a similar lyrical theme as running through it. It's not mm. a light concept. Yeah. It's not a film concept, but you know, there's a lot of things tying it all together, which isn't good for us to things. Yeah. If you want to tie an album together without being really over the top pretentious or risking you know, screwing things up, which is quite easy to do with a concept album. Yeah. Then it's probably the best way of doing it because it keeps everyone thinking, okay, oh, these are similar lyrics, they're different enough to be separable. separatable. Is that even a word? Um, but it keeps them a kind of running theme, mm. which is sound more whole. Yeah. Some albums you get, it's like, oh, these all these songs are completely irrelevant to each other, and it sounds just a bit like a mess. Yeah, and sometimes you get some concept albums where you're sort of like, what was the concept here? <laughs> yeah, that happens as well. Well, the concept is so obtuse that you can't really follow it. Yeah. So it, I can tell what the concept is, but I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> of course, then you get the opposite end of the scale where it's too obvious. <laughs> well, the concept here is love. This guy wants to dick that girl. That's it. <laughs> I don't know. She has a boyfriend. He is a ginger guy named Clive. He is in the way. Then he gets in a car accident and hospitalised. And the main guy's worrying, thinking, should I pull the plug on his ICU? But no, that would be really, really bad. If she found out that I did that, she would leave me forever and never talk to me again. On the other hand, if he survives, maybe they get back together. What do I do? If I don't, next week. Same bad channel, same bad time. <laughs> I have no idea where that came from. That was completely on the fly. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Uh, next we have Thick as Thieves. No. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Huh? There's no opening kind of chanting here. Mm. Now this There's is. A few, few attractive chanting here. It's a different kind of chanting each time, which is nice. Mm. Now this is the. This is where they get kind of ballady, I'd say. Yeah, this is this is probably the most ballad solid in the entire album. Mm. It's even the kind of, kind of blues music style clicking of fingers in the background. Yeah. <laughs> But it's int it's interesting. Uh, it's all 
What's the bit when I listen to the album a couple of times? I have that like this song never really stuck with me that much. Yeah, same. It's <laughs> it's one of I I think out out of the songs, asking for it and thick as thieves are probably my least favourite. Yeah, they're definitely the weakest two songs in the album. I say. Mm. They're not bad. They're just kind of forgettable, really. Yeah. To the others. It's like something Victor Tolliver again. Yeah. Just good songs, but. They're pale in comparison to the rest and don't really have anything to make them stand out. Yeah, of course, I'd much rather an album have sort of like one or two songs that are like that and the rest are just solid. Or really good in some cases, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a couple of weak tracks is nearly expected to be there. I mean, a band will write like 13, 14 songs or so. And chances are at least one of them will probably not be as good as the others. That's mm. the way taste works. The chance of actually liking every single track equally is very, very low. Yeah. I mean,. The only time that I can only think of one album I've listened to recently that has almost been like that, and that was the Delane album that I got. <laughs> well, I've was a, I've discussed this a few times with various people about what makes a perfect album. Mm. And if you realise that actually there's barely any in existence. Yeah. There's probably like a handful, that's yeah. it, out of thousands and thousands of albums. Yeah. I mean, as much as I am the massive Devin Townsend fanboy, I would not be able to say that any one of his albums is entirely perfect. I think Deconstruction is very close. Yeah. I mean... I love that album, it's so good. Yeah. Every (laughs) album... He hasn't released a bad album, in my opinion. All of them have been solid and amazing, but I would never say that he has released the perfect album. I'm trying to think, I can't actually think of anything I think off the top of my head that actually I would class as a perfect album. Mm. Also, it wouldn't actually be perfect, but as close as you can get. Yeah. But it's extremely hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> as because... you said, perfection is kind of it should be a hard thing to strive for. Yeah. Especially as you're trying to plumb the depths of your creative energy, mm. so sooner or later you're going to find that you don't have as much input into a song as the rest of the album. And even if you do, there's a chance that someone will think, oh, okay, this song is like, complex, it's well thought out, it's well composed, but I just don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the other problem. It's like, there's no real way you can please everybody, so it's pretty practically impossible. Yeah, you can please some of the people all of the time, and all of the people some of the time, but you can't please all the people all the time. Pretty much. I suppose that's probably why Perfect Albums are so hard to come by. Mm. There's chances of someone actually liking all the songs to such a high level that it's extremely low. Yeah. I mean, there's something here and there that kind of bugs you. Yeah. I mean, music is way even more subjective than any... I'd say music is the most subjective thing in existence, and that's why you will never have everyone agree that an album is amazing or the best album ever or anything like that. Pretty much. Yeah, even yeah, even if someone does like agree that an album is perfect, there'll be plenty of people that will agree with that. Yeah. So, well, for the Devin Townsend, for example, there's plenty of people out there that go, "Ew, metal, shit." Hmm. So, seeing as we can't really remember Thick as Thieves that well, and we've kind of tangented a bit. Um, let's have the next one. Yeah, Black Cadillac. We're kind of calm opening again. Hmm. Since after the second half of the album, from the end of all, all that up onwards. Mm. As events is a little more laid back, I guess, than structure. Yeah. I think that's kind of and probably by concept, in fact, kind of all adds up to kind of the build up and the climax and kind of everything off that is more of a, a come down. Yeah. But and this just happens suddenly about drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it really works as a late track as a sort of it feels very much a sort of kicking back, relaxing No, I mean I I reckon Black Adelaide like, could actually work as a last track. Yeah, I personally... It's kind of a, um, it's kind of like a conclusive track or kind of a, a farewell. Yeah, I personally would have had Black Cadillac as the last track. Mm. Uh, it seems that the kind of structure of it, the kind of overall feel and atmosphere makes me think, I remember if I listened to it, I thought, oh, this sounds like a last track. Yeah. This actually wasn't. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of one of those slower piece tracks that still has a nice kind of beat to it. Mm. This is another one, like um, Cut the Cord, I think it was, where... So, you just end up tapping your feet and you can't even notice it. Yeah. Like, Wait, I tapped my feet? When did that happen? <laughs> also, if you look at the lyrics, it seems to kind of come into a realisation about something as well. Mm. 
So I was going through all the stuff, all the other tracks of yeah, Bruno Ellis, and one of these thought, okay, this is how it is. I'm okay with this. Mm. I'm going to get in my Cadillac and I'm going to drive somewhere because I can. Yeah. So, <laughs> so feast your eyes on the big blue sky and wave bye bye from a long black Cadillac. Pay the price, got to roll those dice and wave bye bye from a long black Cadillac. So yeah, right, he's come to accept. Yeah, people probably don't like him that much because he's, you know, not a normal person. Mm. And he's okay with that. Yeah, and it's just, you know, enjoy life, however... It, it's one of those... It's not a new concept by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely a good way of delivering the concept. Hmm. It's a very solid song, and it just all comes together for it. Also, again, as I mentioned earlier on, the composition of most of these songs is, is spot on. Yeah. I can't fault it. It may be relatively simple most of the time, but it's accurate, and it's done correctly. <laughs> Well, like I said a while back about um, oh, Big Hero 6, uh, it doesn't matter whether or not the story is new or the concept is new. What matters is whether you can deliver it well, mm. whether you can well, tell a good story and actually make people emote well as a consequence of it. Yeah, also, as, as I was saying, for complexity, it's like, it's better to have something that's relatively simple but done extremely well than trying to do something complex and screw it up. Mm. I prefer something that is relatively simple but done properly. Yeah. It's uh, just more enjoyable. Yeah. And finally, we have Misfits. As I mentioned before, it makes you think of the cure a little bit. Yeah. Also, yeah. the vocal sounds completely different because Robert Smith's got a very specific voice. Yeah. Which is Natural instrumentation sounds quite similar, so I suppose it's kind of disintegration era, so it's a little bit like plain song thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, Misfits, possibly my favourite song in the album. Hmm, it's good to hear. Um, mainly because it kind of, here we get to really doing well with emoting and evoking powerful imagery, it kind of makes me think back to um, one of my friends from round here and um, it's basically a case of you know the uh, whole idea of being as close as brothers and all that sort of thing mm. well, you know, if you follow along from the theme so far as I know he's kind of accepted it and he's like okay then I've accepted that I am what I am and oh, there's plenty of people here that are very much like me I'm going to be friends with them Yeah, <laughs> we're going to band together stronger than others simply because we're all like Outcast, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we all have the same kind of feeling, so it's something we can bond through, and we'll be closer than they ever will, because there's something gone. Yeah. I mean, the chorus they called us crazy because we never fit in. We never bothered keeping up with their trends. It didn't matter that we weren't on the list because we were misfits. We were misfits. Mm. And it's just that whole idea of just not caring about what's trendy and stylish or anything like that, just presenting yourself as you want. Mm. I mean, what I would say Black Hell Life is a better closing song, this does a pretty good job of it still. Yeah. I mean, it's not a critical issue, it's fun where it is. Yeah. It's kind of like the final release of the album. Mm. It's funny come to oh well, yeah. It's gonna have a, yeah, I suppose I kind of an epiphany, thinking, ah, oh, this is where I wanted to be all along. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um now I will outline this is one of those annoying cases where there are two more tracks, but they're on a Japanese release. I never got why Western bands seem to have Japanese specific bonus tracks. It seems something really common. Yeah. Of course It's like I've, an odd choice. Yeah. Of course, I would like to review those songs, but unfortunately, we don't have them. Don't have them. So, if I manage to get a hold of them, it might be a case of us doing a mini show just to say what we think of those two tracks. See what yeah. happens. Um, but overall opinion on the album, it's pretty solid. I mean, they wouldn't say anything particularly special, but I'm certainly it's not something I wouldn't mind listening to. I probably will go back to it. Mm. So, but I think, oh, I'll probably go back in a couple of months. Think, oh, I have that. I've got to listen to that. I'll go back to it. Mm. Thinking about it, I you know going on our star system, I'd probably give it a four out of five. Oh, well, yeah, that seems okay. I mean, I, I can't quite tell whether I want a three point five or a four, but somewhere around that kind of area. Though. Yeah, I. 
I mean, it's definitely above average. Definitely above good. If good would be a three, which I presume it would. Yeah. It's between good and great. Yeah. Assuming ours is like bad, okay, good, great, amazing, and that's all that. Yeah. Doesn't really actually work out what the stars mean. Mm -hmm. Probably there's a good reason for that because then it kind of locks things down. Yeah, it just makes us go. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. I'd certainly say if you like rock or whatever kind of metal it is, but it is kind of metal. But Shinedown kind of skirt the line between metal and rock. Yeah, if you like this kind of thing, then give it a shot. I mean, I said there are influences in a lot of things here, mm. both within rock and without rock. So yeah, um, I'm trying to think what, what kind of what I'd recommend it to if people had similar tastes. In fact, no more. I recommend would probably work out there. Uh, Faith No More, uh... Blackstone Cherry, possibly? Uh, that's who I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> Blackstone Cherry. Also a bit of Seether as well. So. Yeah, I can hear that. So if you like any of those, I would recommend giving this a shot. Mm. Probably are others, there's probably plenty of others, because you know, rock's a pretty massive genre overall. Yeah. And not particularly descriptive one either, because there's all the real places, so many different kinds. Yeah, I mean, this is why I... I just remember looking up Dog Fashion Disco and then being described as avant-garde metal, and I was sort of like, oh, please fuck off. <laughs> it's jazz metal. Indeed. Avant-garde metal. What the fuck does that even mean? It's like alternative metal. As opposed to what? <laughs> alternative as opposed to not alternative metal. <laughs> ah. Jesus. Jam phone. <laughs> We paused momentarily. Um, nah, it's fine. Yeah, I need to pull off just for a sec. So. Okay. I'll 